Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and today we're going to do something a little bit unusual for me. First, this video is going to be relatively short compared to the typical length of my videos. Secondly, this is really a follow-up to two other videos. The first is a video I posted yesterday on installing Capricorn tubing into your 3D printer. I used this ANET ET4 as the example printer, and in fact, I wasn't successful because I couldn't get the tube to go all the way to the nozzle. You can see that video on the channel. Second, about three months ago, I did a review of the ANET ET4, and so in some ways, this is a bit of a follow-up because we're going to use it as an example for a critical component of all 3D printers, and that's the hot-end mechanism the hot end of a filament-based 3D printer. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, when I agreed to do a review of an ET4, ANETS actually sent me from Amazon two returned printers. I asked them why they sent me two. It was because these were returned. They assumed something wasn't working right. I'd have enough parts to assemble a printer correctly. In fact, the first one just had a blown fuse and it worked properly. I took the second one out of the box today and I completely disassembled the hot end. So first I took the housing off the hot end. Here's the housing right here. So you can see there are two fans in this housing. One of those fans blows on a radiator that is used to cool off the filament that's coming from the Bowden tube to the hot end. And we'll talk some more about that in a minute. The other fan uses this little nozzle here to blow on the filament on the print bed. That's to cool the filament at, on the print bed so that the layers properly adhere together so your print does not deform as you print one layer on top of the other. If the print was too soft, too hot underneath, as you printed other layers above it, your print would deform. Now in this mechanism, along with the fans, are two other key components. I'll put these down here so that we can see them on my Osmo close-up camera. One is the thermistor that's used to determine the temperature of the hot end and report it back to the firmware. And the other is the heating element. And we'll see where those go in a minute. Now, if we go to the actual hot end, there's a carriage. The carriage just fits on these rails here that moves the hot end back and forth. Attached to the carriage, we have the component that ANET calls the radiator. So the hot end consists really of three parts. I'm going to do this down here so we can see it on this camera. The hot end consists of the radiator, which is a cooling mechanism, part of the heat break mechanism, an extension to which I really considered the actual heat break, and then a hot end that in this case screws to the extension tube. So we have a cooling mechanism, the extension tube, and the hot end. Plugged into the hot end in this hole right here, we plug in the heating element. In the hole next to it, we have the thermistor, so we know what temperature the hot end has been heated to. On the end of the hot end, we have a nozzle that just screws in. Now, in this style of hot end, the Bowden tube, the tube that goes from the extruder to the hot end carrying the filament, goes all the way down into the hot end. And so this actually goes all the way through here and then goes all the way down. And if we unscrew this here and we look here, we'll see that the Bowden tube is actually coming out the end of the extension tube and going into the hot end so that it butts up directly with this nozzle. Now, that's one of the reasons you have to be careful with your Bowden tube. It has to be made of the proper materials so that it doesn't melt because it will get pretty hot at that point. But by the time it gets back up here to the coupler, we want it to be cool. Now, the couplers on the hot end just screw in. They come in different styles. This style has the tube, once again, going all the way through. 
Yesterday, I went to upgrade my ET4 from the Bowden tube that came with the printer to Capricorn tubing because it's a higher quality mechanism. So that Capricorn tubing goes through the coupler. The coupler actually connects here and then it comes all the way out and into the hot end where the heating element is. But remember in between these two components is this tube. And this tube is the extension tube and the problem is that this Capricorn tube will not go all the way through the tube. When it gets to this area of the tube where there are threads, it stops. Now if I was to leave it there and assemble this back together, that means that I would have a gap between the end of my Bowden tube and the nozzle of, oh, I think it's about five millimeters. In all likelihood, my printer would jam repeatedly. Now, if I look at the tubing that came with the printer and we measure it, it's a little bit thinner. And in fact, that tubing will fit all the way through. Okay, so I have the tubing through the coupler that will then go through the radiator mechanism. We'll just manually screw this on to give you an idea of how this would fit together. Then that's going to go through the coupler to the very end here, but not just about there. Then the hot end is going to actually screw on here. This is the actual heating element. Just like that. The heating element will get plugged in. The thermistor will get plugged in. There are two screws here that are used to stabilize this element. And there is our assembled hot end with the tube going all the way to the end. This then gets mounted to the carriage here. It mounts this way. So this is how it would look. The fans go on the outside and you are ready to print. So how do we potentially solve this problem? Well, one way would be to take a piece of the original filament and insert it all the way in and then maybe cut it at this point somewhere along here and then butt the Capricorn tube up to it. The problem with that is that one of the reasons we're upgrading to Capricorn tubing is because it's safer. We want the Capricorn tubing next to the nozzle where it heats up so it doesn't give off uh, gases that can happen from lower quality Teflon manufactured tubing. So instead, Capricorn actually makes a short tube that's only three millimeters outside diameter. And I've ordered some of those and I'm going to try those inside here uh, with the traditional Capricorn tubing butted up against that. And we'll see if that works. And we'll look at that potentially in a future video. Well, folks, I hope you learned something. I hope you learned something about how a hot end works, what the various parts are. This is all clear to you and why there's this challenge with the ET4. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up, suggest this video to other people. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together.